Hi, Tech Rabbit here. So I do a short video on um, tips to reduce 4K video recording stress, and um, just go from my personal experiences. Um, I have um, two cameras myself. Uh, the one I've started with well, is a cheaper one, Panasonic uh, DC GX 800K. Up here, so if you can look at it more closely, and then I have, uh, and that's this one here, and then I have um, my latest acquisition, which is yeah, it's admittedly three times more expensive. It's the Sony A6400, and both of them have the kit lenses, so I haven't invested in glass yet. Um, you know, one of the sad things is just because the camera spec says that it's 4K, it doesn't really mean that it's that useful for that, um, after my experiences. Uh, one of the issues is that, um, lo lots of cheaper 4K cameras have a, um, intentionally limited 4K record time. Um, and it's... N it's um, sometimes well written up in the specifications and sometimes not and um, also it's not very clearly if it's a technical limitation in the camera itself or if it's actually some kind of a licensing limitation but anyway they avoid I recommend avoiding such cameras and usually the limitation is five minutes max 4k record um, Then also the other issue is the overheating. Um, oh, sorry, I should mention the one reason I got the um, Sony A6400 is that this has unlimited 4K. Basically, you can record until the memory card or energy runs out. Um, and then um, this one has the um, like five minutes max. Uh, the other issue is camera overheating is quite a major issue. I mean, I don't live in a country that gets exceptionally hot in the, in the summertime in the place that I record it. We have no air conditioning, not usual, not um, usual in, the, in the region I live in to have air conditioning. Um, the Panasonic will overheat quite frequently and shut down. Um, the A6400 will continue working under quite strenuous situations uh, when it comes to heat. I mean, I think that one would personally feel it's way too warm to even think about taking videos um, before the A6400 will give up. Um, the other issue I've been having is I like, would like to be able to stream live video out of the camera directly into the PC. And um, uh, it's a, there's little tricky questions around that also. Um, not all cameras provide um, live feed through the HDMI. The HDMI is mainly preserved for playback. And in the case of the Panasonic, it's, you can play back um, up to, I think it was up to the 4K quality. But only playback, you, you can't use it to um, display the picture while it's yeah, live, you can't live stream it like a webcam. The A6400, you can get 4K out of it. Um, yeah. Uh, and then there's some little bit of warnings. Um, You could be hit by a situation where your camera supports 4K, but the um, live live video is only um, full HD, and that's, um, for example, in the latest GoPro 7 camera, that's the case that it's a 4K camera, but it, the live feed is reduced to full HD. Um, then also there's some some weird cameras where you can actually get the 4K out but then there's no way to get rid of the menu overlay so it's more like for um you know if you would have a 4k monitor connected to the camera so it's not really meant that you should record that video feed 
that's a very strange thing. Um, here you can actually on the um, on the Sony you can turn off the menu overlay so you don't get that problem. Uh, should ensure that you have a little bit more than just the kit battery that comes with the with the device. And um, I think we will solve that issue right now. So I've actually got some new batteries. So here's the battery in the camera, and then I've purchased. Uh, Two more. So let's do some battery unboxing. Actually, check if these are the right ones. They should be. Really hard to open these and pack them into such plastic. It's always good to have to get this solved because I've had a bit of recording stress related to the fact that I only had one battery. So oh, that's that one. Okay, so that's um, three batteries. So that would be my recommendation to have for recording. So, and then the other recommendation um, would be to actually have a charger for the batteries. So I'll um, fix that. Let's see. Take that one instead. Actually, purchase this one. Just 
last one was generic chargers. No box there. To the original charger Bit of a dim display. Okay. Garbage. So let's try and plug in some new batteries here. That's the first one. It's starting to charge up the extra batteries, so that's a, another thing I recommend is a charger. And then um, also there's, a, there's another thing that I could recommend that I found is a um, power supply for the actual camera. Um, I mean the Sony it, it doesn't support um, it doesn't support powering through the USB cables. To, uh, get a little trick to solve that. And, um, that's this this box here. input 100 to 140 volts so no, this, this should work just fine but why do I does it not have the correct plug for us like for European usage
that's not quite a standard connector that much. But it does say that it's for 240, so this this will not work for us. This was an American stuff. American stuff. Moving on. So I'm going to have to um, test that. Okay. Use the camera. The one that comes with the camera has that exact option. But now it's powering the charging the battery. So I'm going to take it out. So okay. So live live proof of this working. We'll have to wait. Let's see if we can back here. Or is this just the... Anyway, um, the idea is that this is a battery adapter. So it's a power supply that feeds power into a simulated battery. And then you can operate the camera. So the camera thinks it has a full battery all the time. Which is actually quite good. I don't think I'll power this in. Uh, so that gets. Oh, it's got a very long cable. Look at that. That whole length and that. There's this whole length. So that shouldn't be a problem to position. And then these two cables go together. I don't already know why this has been applied exactly. Maybe it's to try and keep the battery clean. Oh, the battery adapter clean. Mm. Okay, so I can't use this one. I might be able to plug it into a power cord that came with the camera. So, so we take the camera bay here. Slot the fake battery into the camera bay, and it will be held because it's got a latch. You can't obviously close it, it's probably not the biggest problem. So now let's see if I do borrow the adapter. Green. And we'll see if this starts or blows up. Oh, see. Whoops. Power. Should probably have it standing on its lens. See, so that's how it works. So it's connected with a cable into the power cabinet, and um, now I have to return the power to the battery charge. That's not good to interrupt that. So, that's a nice little solution. So, so if one has it on a tripod and, and one's doing like more fixed location, fixed location or recording, actually have that. So now I think the power issues are are solved. Um, and then another issue that will catch you is that okay, you know, you're happily recording and, and you know, 4K takes up quite a lot, of, quite a lot of um, space. So then it suddenly you run out of storage medium SD cards. So uh, what I've done is I I have one one SD card already in there. And I've invested in. And two more. Uh, and then in addition to that, I've invested in SanDisk's own reader. Um, just as a side note, this reader is, is uh, 
one of the ones that guarantee that you get up to full copying speed on the on USB 3. So if you don't have this, then you're liable to have uh, lower performance. And uh, if you try and take it directly out of the camera, you also get a reduction in transfer, transfer speed. So the fastest transfer speeds are available through taking the um, memory card out and plugging it into this one. And then plugging this into, into the computer. So, just open, unbox this also. So, I, I went with the same plan actually. I mean, I, I think you could have you know, like two memory card, uh, SD cards, it's probably enough. Uh, three. So, that's just a Simply uh, plug that into the into the USB. You know, it seems to be a USB Type C connector on the computer, and then uh, you put the memory card from the camera. In there. And you can use the full size adapter, so you don't have to try to take like take out the um, take out the uh, actual SD card, micro SD card, which is actually quite nice. Is there a bit bothersome to deal with those small, small ones? So, okay, and then we have um, one recommendation is don't buy SD cards that are not main brand. I mean, in our region, SanDisk is basically the, the yeah, consider it the main brand. You, you might have others that are good quality also, but SanDisk is usually not known to be uh, they're making the most advanced because they make a lot of um, memory cards that we don't, as a consumer or YouTuber, one doesn't have any any hope of affording, but they, they do actually also have a uh, set of products for like hardcore professionals of all kinds. So they, I think they have a whole load of experience. Of how to get these things to work and how to, I mean they're the most reliable at least I, when I've been using SanDisk I've had less failures of cards or less catastrophic. I don't know why they have this kind of plastic. It's why do use that for? So okay so this is what it looks like. in micro SD format. It doesn't matter. The camera takes the I'm going to use it for the song. I think this one doesn't pay attention to it. Okay, it does SDXC UHS one chord. So it is in that one part. Oh, it doesn't matter. I think it's actually integrated in here. So I can't actually remove it. This one I actually bought this as a micro SD format card. And this is in this big format by D. Oh, that's better actually. I like these big format ones. Well, well, not the correct definition, obviously. <laughs> I never liked the micro SD stuff. So, 
They came with a nice little package also, which is nice to keep them safe. Everyone's traveling and stuff. So, nice package. I'll open this one a little bit later. Uh, yeah, and the that pretty much is wrapping up the little hints that I had for tips for now on this stuff. Um, being is important, so in, invest in that. Or move to a country that has constant ambient light, lighting. Uh, then also, uh, one thing, I mean, it's not really 4K related, but I mean, it's actually good to have is that if you make sure the camera It actually has an. Oh, sorry. It actually has the audio, audio output, so you can actually put a mic on, on the actual camera itself. So okay, that kind of wraps it up for now. Uh, I hope some of these um, tips were useful. Um, uh, you can find this stuff on, on you know, Amazon. Really, not really that difficult to find as long as you know what you're looking for. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, consider subscribing if you thought you got value. I'm going to make more of these. Um, press the bell icon so that you get notifications, I hope, if YouTube doesn't continue removing them automatically. And um, see you in the next one.